Hello everybody, I'm Dave from Polypad, and in this Polypad pointer video, I'm gonna show you how the balance scale works on Polypad. The balance scale is one of our most versatile tools on Polypad. I'm gonna show you how it works with algebra tiles and polygons and number cards and number bars and dice, imported images, algebraic expressions, and more. So let's dive in. Here, I've, I've put a balance scale on the canvas. I'm first going to show you how it works with algebra tiles. So I'll add an X tile to one side of the canvas. And I want to show you that our starting value of the X tile is 5. So you can see when I put 5 on the other side, that balances. So X is 5, and our Y value starts at 4. So I'll go here and add a 4 number card, and you see that balances. When I put the four number card on top of the five, it'll merge into nine. So we can see here that X plus Y equals nine, five and four. But of course, there are gonna be times you wanna change the value of an algebra tile from five to something else. So here I have X and nine, X is five, so it's not balanced. But when I click on the balance scale, I get this option in the action bar to balance the scale. Again, that appears when you click on the balance scale. So I'm going to click right here. And in the action bar is this action of balance. When you click balance, Polypad is going to change the value of the X tile from 5 to whatever will balance the scale. Here it's pretty clear that if X is 9, it'll balance the scale. So watch what happens. I click balance. The scale balances itself. And now X is 9. Not just this X tile, but any X tile that I add to this canvas will have a value of 9. So now 2Xs is 18. And it works with all, all versions of an algebra tile that have an X in it. So here, XY, X was 9, so 9 squared is 81. There we go. I could add an XY tile. I never changed the value of Y. That was 4 and nine times four is 36. So that'll balance. So you can change the values of an algebra tile with that option to balance in the scale. In that example I just showed you, it had X on one side and nine on the other. It was clear that the value of X to balance the scale was nine, but it also works in situations where the value of X might not be as obvious. So let me, create an equation, 3x plus 5 equals 40. In my teaching, I would often share a polypad just like this with students where there was an equation at the top and they had to go build it on the balance scale and then solve the equation. So I will add three x's and a five on one side and it should balance with 40. And let's see. And it doesn't balance with 40 because as you recall, we just set the value of X as nine. Three nines is 27, 27 and five is 32, not 40. Now, students would know that the value of X, the starting value is five. So if they were building this, they would know that three fives is 15 plus five is 20. So either way, five doesn't solve this, nine doesn't solve it. And I think there's great value in, in building an equation seeing that it's not balanced, and then having to go to the balance scale. Now I'm going to click balance, and Polypad is going to change the value from 9 currently, or 5 if I had started from a blank Polypad, to whatever will solve this equation. Every now and then I would give my students an equation where 5 was the solution, so they would build it, they would see that it balanced right away, they'd get all excited, and they would know it's 5, and I think that had some had some value as well. But now I'm going to click balance. Watch what happens. Now it's balanced. I don't know what X is, right? Uh, so now I'm going to use these tools to begin to try to find the value of X. So let me give myself a little room. I'm going to take this five and copy it, get it off the balance scale. I'm going to make it a negative five, copy it so I have two of them, and then add on that negative five to both sides of the scale. I've preserved equality here. If I wanted to show this what I'm doing algebraically, I could add in minus five and minus five. This is how I would do it with my students. I'm gonna not solve it algebraically anymore in this video, just to um, 
get to other, other features of the balance scale. Here I can merge those together. I get this gray zero, which I really like. That stays a zero. The, the goal of putting negative five on both sides was to make a zero here. Now I could get rid of it if I wanted to. And now I have three X's balancing with 35. So I have to do 35 split into three groups. So many ways to use the fraction um, bars on Polypad to show that division. If interested, I'm just gonna jump right to the answer here. Uh, I think that is 11 and two thirds. So I'm gonna type two thirds as a fraction with 11. It doesn't balance yet, but I could see if it balances by doing something like that. There's three 11 and two thirds. I use the um, equation, uh, the equation tool at the bottom here to type in 11 and two thirds. And now I can get rid of two of the X's and two of the 11 and two thirds. And indeed I have solved that equation. One X is 11 and two thirds. Awesome. But let me show you some other things on Polypad that work on the balance scale. I'm going to get rid of all of these just to start fresh. Our polygons all have a starting value of one on the balance scale. So if I go here, I'll show you that this square balances with one. Uh, you'll see that a triangle balances with one. In fact, all of the polygons have a starting value of one as well as all of the tiles above the balance scale. So all of these have a starting value of one as well. And the same way that you change the value of an algebra tile, it works for any of these objects. So if I go to the number cards, let's say I want the heart to be four. So now I can click balance and now any heart I use on this canvas is gonna have a value of four. Let's say I want the triangle to be seven. So I'm gonna click balance and now this triangle is worth seven. It also works with uh, an image that you import to Polypad. So if you have one on your desktop, you can just drag it right onto Polypad. There's an upload image option in the toolbar at the bottom that you can use to upload an image as well. I have done it in advance of this video. Here's the image that I have uploaded to Polypad. You can see it's a Mathagon logo, of course. And you can also assign a value to any image that you import. I'll make this a little bit smaller and let's have my Mathagon logo be 10. So now I'm gonna click balance and I'm gonna keep these up here just so I have a record of the ones that I've used so I don't forget. And now I could use those to build a variety of puzzles for my students. Let me make this a little bit smaller, uh, move it up here, zoom out a little bit, and I don't know, I'll make two situations. Let's do on one scale is two hearts and three triangles. Uh, and then maybe on the other scale could be two triangles. Uh, a Mathagon logo and a heart or something. I would probably need one more uh, balance scale to um, add to this here to make it a situation that students could solve. Maybe I'll just do uh, three Mathagon logos. So there we go. I've built my little puzzle for students. I could see hopefully this will balance with 30. There we go. Uh, eight and 14, is that 22? Arithmetic live here, let's see, does that balance? There we go. And 14 and 10 is 24 and four is 28. So let's see, is that balance with 28? There it is, awesome. So now I've made this uh, puzzle. I would take all of these, hit delete, so students would not see that as, as the key. I could go to my file menu, save this, get a URL that I could share with students, and on we go. So that's super fun. The final thing that I wanna show you is um, I, I use the equation tool at the bottom to build 11 and 2 thirds, and you saw that that was a way to check that I solved the equation. That can work in a lot of, in a lot of situations. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna swipe over to our Polypad pointer YouTube playlist, a lot of great things here to watch, to go learn about how to use Polypad. I'm gonna open the one called Multiplying Fractions. Pause the video so you don't hear two of me. 
And I'm going to get a link to a polypad that I'm using in this video as a way to talk about how to model fraction multiplication. So I'm going to open this polypad in the, um, in the description of the video. I'm going to zoom in a bunch all the way to the top. I'm not going to explain here how I use this to model fraction multiplication. You can go watch the polypad pointer video on that. I just want to show how here the balance scale can be used by students to give them feedback on their own about a question they are working on. So here this first question is 3 fourths times 5 six. I could model this with the fraction bars. Go watch that video if you want. But here I can use the equation tool to check an answer. So let's say I get 15, 20. Oh, I meant to type in 20 fourths, but I typed in 20 thirds. And I see that's too much. 15, 20 thirds is not the answer, right? But if I change this to 20 fourths, it balances. So there's the answer of 15, 20 fourths. If I want to simplify it, I could divide these both by three. So what's that? Five eighths. Oh, there we go. So I find the balance scale can be really helpful on a, on a polypad like this, where students might be, um, might be working on a variety of questions and they want to get feedback as to if that question is correct or incorrect. Here are, um, are some random number tiles. I can generate a new question. So let's see here. I got 3 twelfths times 3 ninths. And, ooh, first I might say I know 3 ninths is the same as 1 third. Let's see. Does that stay balanced? Yes. And 3 twelfths is the same as 1 third. Oh, 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 sorry. That was a mistake. What I should have done, let me undo this whole thing, right? I want to take this. And I want to move it over here so I can check for equality, right? So now that does that stay balanced? Yes. But now if I change this to one third, it's no longer balanced because I simplified that incorrectly. So now I can get that feedback. If this is one fourth, now it's balanced. And now let me check that multiplication. Does that equal one twelfth? Let's see, one twelfth. Yes, awesome. So that's a way to use the balance scale to uh, confirm any calculations that you were doing. Wonderful. Let me go back to the balance scale here. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful to share with you the range of possibilities with the balance scale. One last thing to share. Uh, let me go just to a new balance scale. This works with almost all of the number tiles. I've been showing it to you with the number cards. It works with the number bars and the number tiles and the prime factor circles and so on. And it works with our dice and playing cards. So one of my favorite examples is to put six die on the, um, on the balance scale. Oh, I copied the whole scale. I don't want that. So there are six. I can roll all of those. And I just think a fun question for students is, to tell them they have to balance this scale, but they can, they can only use two or three number bars, however, um, whatever number you think is appropriate for them. So let's do it with three number bars here. So I see a six and four is 10. I see a five and two is seven. And a one and three is four. So let's see if that'll balance. It does, right? How lovely. And then I can roll the dice again. And we have to balance it again. Uh, so what I could hit delete on all of these. Let's see. Ooh, I see another six and a four is 10. There we go. I see two threes is a six. Oh, and a five and one is another six. And I think it's uh, a nice opportunity for students to share how they're seeing the numbers on the dice and um, how they're deciding to balance the scale. So uh, the balance scale. Um, as I showed, it works with our dice. It also works with our playing cards. So you could put on uh, an eight and a nine on one side, and you could tell students you have to balance that with two numbers that are different than what you have on the playing card. So maybe I'll do a 10 and a seven. I just want to show you that that balances. Wonderful. 
Thanks for watching. I hope this gave you a good overview of the balance scale. Please share in the comments how you use the balance scale as part of your work with students. We'd love to hear um, how you are using this in your classroom. Thanks for watching.